Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my friends. Welcome, welcome. We are here with our latest PMP guru on the block, Mr. Taiwo Oladiji. Taiwo, how are you feeling as a PMP right now? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm so happy. I don't even know how to express it. <laughs> oh, my. It's crazy. It seems like yesterday I got an email from you asking about the PMP and I was explaining what to do. And then eventually you came on the program. How many months ago was that? Yeah, I think uh, that was beginning of August, so just mid August actually. Wow. And you had never heard about PMP or any of that stuff before August or had not started a journey in earnest, had you? Yeah, I actually have heard about project management professional exams before, but there wasn't a chance like just really go deep into it because I was in another feed then because I was like in UI UX design. So I was like, okay, mm -hmm. just let me focus on this first. But I never even thought of that at all. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's been such a journey and to have seen you just go through the journey from beginning to end. I yeah. want to applaud you personally. There's one thing that happened that made me know, yeah, he's, he's going to get it. It was when you spoke German. I'm like, he picked up this language in record time and is is like you're actually quite, how should I say, versatile in adapting because I gave you something to interpret in in from English to German and it wasn't easy. And when you did it, I'm like, yeah, he's gonna if he can do this, he's gonna get certified. So that that was that was when I knew I'm not gonna worry about you anymore. So <laughs> It's come full circle. I'm really excited and happy to be interviewing you now as a PMP boss. So let's talk about, yeah, let's talk about why did you want to do PMP in the first place? And uh, what was your online course experience with me like? Yeah, actually, um, why I really want to do the P, I decided to go for PMP at uh, I think the drive came through from my from my wife actually, because uh, I had in one way or the other engaged in uh, different, uh, not really deeply into project management, but I was more into like stakeholder engagement and uh, really need to solve the problem and to make changes in my environment to create value. But I never knew that I have the yeah, the skills, the 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 competence to to be a PMP or a project manager. Until my wife just told me, like, ah, but you have so done a lot in in your community, you know, trying to engage to different stakeholders and trying to solve community problems. And it's more or less like that because you, I engaged in scheduling, sending emails to key stakeholders, and I felt, oh, that's true. I think it's a it's a good thing for me to go into a PMP. So I started first engaging myself in the there's a project management Google project management on Google stuff just to know if that is my channel if I could have interest before you know I shouldn't just you know rely on my emotions alone but at least just to test my competence in it. So when I started with the Google just to bring myself. I didn't develop my skills a bit, oh, not bad. Then I was linked up to Mary. The Mary linked me up to you, and I never regret the, the time I met you. Wow. I am so excited. So for those people who have done a Google search, you heard what our friend Ty was said. You could easily take that knowledge and continue on to become uh, PMP certified. And for those of you who know about the program, tell others about it. Because you just never know how you're going to help someone frame their career as it happened to Taiwan. Also me, someone told me about PMP and that's how I got certified. It was someone at work who said, you know, you make a good PMP. Have you ever thought of this? So, yeah, it's funny. Her name is Mary as well. So Ma Mary Hirshner, shout out to, to you, my mentor from 17 years ago who introduced me to PMP. So let's talk about you and how many hours a day you were studying because it seemed like you were hitting this stuff pretty hard were you doing up to four hours a day yeah i actually do more than i i i when i come back from work i the first thing i always do is i just go to bed and rest for one hour 30 minutes oh, wow 
So when I wake up, I always wake up 6.30. Then I always finish up 1.30. Okay. okay. So that is approximately like five hours every day. Okay. Five hours every day. Yeah. Good, good. Wow, that's a lot of time. And did you organize your studying in any particular way? Because you know how we went through the course was agile, and then we went into predictive. We did a lot of the uh, agile stuff first before jumping into predictive. So how were you studying after the course? Yeah, I think I, I first read the, read the, the agile guide. I read the agile guide. So after that, then I started with the pen book. Mm. So the way I just do it is this way. I Within the four hours of my day, I use like one hour to read the hardware guide to okay. the time I can like, like finish it up. Is it I just read one chapter for one hour? And the, the second one, the, another chapter, you know, I just go into the Helen mess. Okay. Or just to watch the video from the top. Okay. So if I could watch like two hours, 45 minutes, then fine. Then I continue with the with the pen book. Okay. And with one chapter, I'm fine for the day because I still have a span of time to to prepare for the exam. Actually, I was I had not even booked for the exam. So after mm -hmm. that, I just round everything off with uh, rounded everything off with uh, maybe high high 15 questions. Then okay. I okay. Would you say you studied more agile than predictive? Or what was the titration for you? I studied more, I studied more predictive than Oh that. really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. I studied more predictive than I because it seems the 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 predictive tends to be more challenging for me, especially the high TTOs. Mm. So a week before your exam. You know, and one of the things you did, which I must commend you for, is you were attending the daily scrums that we have every, I mean, like now it's 1, 1 a.m. in Germany, 1.13 a.m. in Germany. So I, I really commend you on joining the daily scrums and being as engaged as you were, because I think all of that added up. So the week before the exam, I saw you on the daily scrums. Do you want to walk us through what you might have studied the week before anything in particular that was different? Mm -hmm. Actually, I I was really on the LMS, you know, and uh, I had to go through the the Haja guide all over again, like wow. to the end. And I also finished the Pembo guide also twice, <laughs> everything twice. So, well, in the end, then I had to go back to to the to the LMS as well just to treat all those questions one after the other, then the link of drag and drops, just to refresh my memory. And uh, and I was happy that I also came across this uh, funny Scrum Master video because it's it was really a booster or kind of energizer that's really helped me hell in the morning, today, yesterday morning. And uh, because on my way to work, I was on the train when I was like, I was listening to your audio. So, and as I was listening to it, it was going out from the other side. Yeah, it was not assimilating because <laughs> I was thinking just to refer, but it wasn't working actually because I've read a lot. I've, I've listened to that a lot. If I'm going to work early in the morning, I just tap my hair pod, listening to it. I listen to schedule cost, quality like that till I get to work, then I just switch it up. But today I just... Uh, I was listening to you, but it wasn't really coming through. Like I couldn't really assimilate. So then I was like, oh, I got a video from the LMS about this funny Scrum Master. Just let me keep myself happy. So I just played played it on, on my on, on the trade and it was actually very funny. And I was just laughing and I could see the reality of the exam. Like, and some of those questions are almost related to what I I was watching in the video, like the role of a scrum master. And that's the, that big, uh, big guy from the New Zealand who was acting as a scrum master and terrorizing yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I think it's maybe some of uh, my colleagues might have seen the video. Maybe it's not new, but I decided to do that because nothing was even. I had some my some of my notes with me that I jotted 
it wasn't really working you know the pressure was just there like just let me get into the example but to utilize the time i was like yeah it's not bad so what just found because they are keywords they are ethics the thing is trying to cut across like to preach so you just need to grab it and they have the mentality as well into the exam because the exam at the end was yeah it was what it is gotcha gotcha Thank you so much. I want to give a shout out to our friends who are here joining us on this call. So shout out to Colvin and Shauna and Chandra, PMP boss, who came in to support you. Is there anything you want to say to our friend at this time? Congrats or anything else? Congratulations. Yeah. Yes, congratulations okay. to you, Tabu. Oh, thanks, Ben. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Chandra, and Shauna. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Awesome. It's It's been a, a journey that we've all been taking together. And uh, it's always fun when, you know, one of us is able to to ace the exam. So I want to uh, thank you for coming. Uh, Chandra, despite being a PMP, thanks for showing up to support our friend. Appreciate it. See Good you, deal. All right. So let's talk about your exam. So how far away from your where you live was your exam? You ha did you have to travel far to get to the Test yeah, I had to travel for uh, it's um like one hour forty five minutes. Not wow, wow, that's a hike. That's a hike. I see Cynthia joined as well. Cynthia, thanks for coming in to support our friend, even though you are PMP. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's awesome of you. Thanks so much. All right, so let's talk about your exam. So one hour forty five minutes. My goodness, and uh, what were you doing on the train, watching that funny video? Then you yeah. finally get. Yeah, I was actually watching the, the funny Scrum Master. <laughs> it was really funny. And uh, I think and Je that, Jeff Sutherland is in that video, isn't he? Yeah. The yeah. One is. yeah. So if uh, you can, if you can, um, I'm actually going to drop it in, in the chat because everyone knows it's called a funny Scrum Master movie with Jeff Sutherland. I'm going to put it in the chat now. So let me go ahead and do that. And anyone who hasn't watched the video, uh, you can thank Taiwo later for mentioning it. But I think I think you're going to get some some fun uh, tips and ideas from it. So I'll put that there. I also want to give a shout out to our friends on YouTube who are watching this uh, session right now. Thank you for joining us. If you do have any questions for Taiwo, make sure you put them in the chat. And I'm going to put this link in the chat for you all right now so that you can go watch that video on Jeff Sutherland and uh, the funny scrum master. There we go. Uh, funny scrum. There you go. All right. So let's talk about how it was for you when you got to the test center. They scanned you. They took your ID. Did they let you in immediately or did you have to wait a little bit? Yeah, actually, I got in the seven thirty in the morning. Wow! So, and uh, when I got there, you know, just uh, has to check. They had to check my passport for identification, mm. mm -hmm. and I just had to sign, you know, just to know I'm present. And then, so after like fifteen minutes, so the lady just spoke to me like, "Are you willing to start now?" Mm. I was like. <laughs> Man, you shouldn't. I shouldn't just start immediately. Then I was like, "Yeah, why not?" <laughs> so you just went for it. Wow. Let's just start it. So I said, okay, I'm ready to start now. So you sure? So yeah, okay. Drop your car, uh, your card, your phone, everything. Then just follow me. Then I followed her. Then I, I started immediately around seven forty-five because I finished around. Trev or something before Trev. Mm. Yeah, I, that was early. Like when I went to my emails, I'm like, wow, he's already done. That was yeah. quick. So did you spend all 230 minutes or, or less? I spent everything. I spent mm. all of my 230 minutes, right? 230, yeah. yeah. So let's yeah. talk about let's talk about how the exam uh, was at a high level. So the question people have the most is people process business, which ones seem to be 
the biggest to you? Was it truly process that was the biggest in your mind or what? Hmm. <laughs> I think uh, actually I, it seems to be people. Mm -hmm. That's what everyone says. People seems to be more, even though it's supposedly 42%, it seems to be more like a 70, uh, you know, because it's very situational. And that's what people forget. Even though it's a process question, it has to be, you are a human being called a project manager doing X, Y, Z. This is what is going on. What should you do next? How many of the questions, Taiwo, would you say were not, what should the project manager do next? What percentage was something else other than what should the project manager do next? Yeah, all the percentage, uh, like 25 or mm. 25. Okay. And what were those? Were those more like, um, uh, what should I say? Just testing you about these uh, high TTUs, you know. Just oh, okay. Testing. Definitions. Yeah, like the definition is just telling you, uh, we just, uh, we got a business case and the business and that, blah, blah, blah. What next do you need to do? You okay. Know? So you less know. situational, more procedural, more like what ne what is the next step, but not based on situation, more based on, <laughs> on the process. It's just based on it because they don't just want to tell you, okay, what is the heart put of mm. for the, you know, <laughs> identify gotcha. stakeholders. You know, they just want you to know like where exactly, do you know where exactly we are not right now? Okay, mm -hmm. let's see if it's Got you. What about business? Would you say business was very obvious when they were asking a business question? No. <laughs> it all blended together. What about, now tell me this, everyone's itching to hear this. Let's zoom into this because this is my signature question that I ask everyone who gets certified. Agile hybrid predictive, which one was the biggest in your mind? Mm -hmm. The biggest, I think it's agile. <laughs> okay and if you were to be if you were to give like points to each one and you had a hundred points how many of the hundred points would you give to agile versus hybrid versus predictive yeah to me uh, i would say like 70 75 to agile wow yeah so that's crazy because there's just less than 70 actually to okay. agile. wow that's huge that's huge lot. So if you hadn't spent as much time as you did in the class with us for the foundations, learning Agile in the beginning, this would yeah. have been hard. Mm -hmm. mm. Exactly. There's some technical Let questions also came up from like Agile, like very technical. Oh, really? Wow. And would that be more like the practices of Agile, like the 353 and knowing that Scrum really well? Or is it more like the Agile practice guide, other things like Kanban and you know, iterative, incremental, hybrid, more like Agile Guide or, or Scrum? What would you more, think? More, more like Agile Guide, you know, when they are talking about the estimating. Oh. Um, I don't just need to say how, how the question goes, but, you know. Right, right. Like, like Delphi Tech, um, wideband Delphi, story points, yeah, affinity story estimating, point. planning poker. Yeah, so iterative, uh, estimating. And mm. I've never heard about iterative and uh, iterative uh, uh, estimating before, actually. Mm. So, but I was like, okay, when they're talking about agile here, you know, I first chose a bottom up estimating because I was like, okay, the scope is not clear. Mm. And I now thought about it again, like, bro, just go back to the question, reflect. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this but, question is, do you have anything like a uh, um, three-point estimate of bottom-up in Hajai? Do mm -hmm. you have something like that? I was like, no. Yeah. What if this creative estimate is a bit tricky? Well, what yeah. if they talk unboxing or the sprint? Yeah. And they never yeah. ask or give you what you've seen before. It's usually a bit different. They tweak the wording. But anyone who reads pages 90 to 95. Let me put this there for our friends, pages 90 to 95 in the Agile Practice Guide, because the concept of iterative estimating might sound foreign to people until you really think about what am I really doing in 
the world of, of Agile, you're not estimating everything up front. You're estimating in a just-in-time manner, sprint by sprint, which is iterations. So that's a, that's a good one. So what percentage would you have said predictive is if Agile is 70? What about hybrid and predictive? <laughs> what would you say? Yeah, for, the, for the hybrid, uh, I would just say like 20%. Oh my gosh, wow. So that means predictive was very tiny. The predictive was when I say, you know, they were talking about where could you find this and that, you know. Not okay. Oh, that's exactly what I've heard from some other individuals about predictive. It seems like the questions are more uh, more process-based and, and definition-based, but the agile and the hybrid seems to be where the predictive, where the uh, situational uh, mm -hmm. juice is. Wow. So any, any um, advice about how to get good with this content? How did you master it? What did you do that others can, can emulate? Um, I think uh, basically you just have to be careful of anything, you know, because that's the that's just first thing that we just need to know. Uh, is it a hard job? Is it a predictive? Is it anything? I just prepare yourself. Actually, the reason why you really want to be a PMP is not for you just to pass the exam. At least you should have a very sound knowledge about it, you know. That should be the first, you know, ideology or mentality you should have. Because if you have the mentality that I really want to understand what the PMP, the project management is all about, then I think this problem is to be solved. Although we can't know everything because we still learn actually. But uh, after all, we're certified. <laughs> mm. So, so after that, then we need to think about the the first thing when you're reading, you should just keep asking yourself why, why. I think it's mm. a very powerful tool. If they're talking about uh, a project manager or a scrum master, the servant leader, why? You mm. know, ask yourself why. It's not just only reading it, but asking yourself why. It's like you're challenging yourself to go beyond the horizon. And, you know, sometimes I just be in the toilet, you know, even when I'm taking my bath, looking at the mirror, I'm trying to just like teaching myself, you know, mm. think, you know, it's like a mad, mad approach. Mm. Like, <laughs> no madness, you know. So I <laughs> talk about it, but why, why is it not a project? Why mm. not think that then start comparing the new, you just like talking alone in the room and uh, you know it's really help and before you know it sometimes i spent i spent more than one hour that i didn't even realize i've spent because wow I, I i just love it you know wow i i and i did notice that you were going rather deep and that takes us to our next topic on ittos you always ask questions about ittos and let me ask you in reflection, do you think um, that was a uh, time well spent or what advice do you have for ITTOs? Anyone like going crazy over them? Actually, uh, I wouldn't say time well spent, actually. <laughs> if I had knew, I, I would have spent more, but you never know what comes up. You know, That's what, true. What, what we happen to me it might not be, you know, for like banks, you know, yeah. but more predictive, actually, mm -hmm. and more some questions like you just never know you just never know and i want to i want to be the voice of reason and i want to give value to people on the call because we all have different uh different views of the exam so i want to i want to call another of your friends who was in your class i want to call uh, taji taji can you say a quick shout out to our buddy here congratulations classmate <laughs> pmp boss this is my <laughs> classmate y'all but I knew he was going to do it. I knew it. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I have a question, though. Oh, Go for cool. it. Since your question. class, since your test was 70, 70 to 75% agile, and I know that comes from the help of being in the master class. I mean, the first day we started with agile, which I thought was weird. Remember, we didn't start with predictive. We started with agile the first day. The first question was, what is agile? It is a mindset. Remember that? 
So if that's the case, you're ready to join me and get your ACP. Because if you just got 75% of your test, that's that's an ACP test. You might as well go ahead and take the exam. So when you getting ready to do that? When you about that, to come join the cool. ranks with me and get two certifications in six weeks? <laughs> Yeah, actually, I'm still thinking about maybe HCP, maybe PSM, maybe yeah, maybe Sigma, Six Sigma. I'm still let's, let's do it. So we got to do the Agile stuff first, right? When you get done with that, I'll show you how to get the Six Sigma with Michael Harry. You know, Michael Harry's company rests his soul. He's a co-creator of Six Sigma, and he, <coughs> he gave me access to his learning system to before mm. he passed on. And I highly recommend it. I mean, there's nothing like learning from the source. Like you, you're talking about the video you watch for Scrum. Jeff Sutherland is the, the co-creator of Scrum. Mm-hmm. So you always want to learn from the source. Mm-hmm. But we'll talk about Six Sigma next year. You, but you know, you know I, I, one more thing I just want to say. It's very interesting how our tests were flipped. Mine was yeah. exactly the opposite. That's why Mine I called was 70, you. 75% predictive. That's what I wanted you to say. Agile, and his was just the opposite. Isn't that crazy? That's it's why crazy. I called you on to comment. So, I mean, could you imagine having your exam flip? But you were ready. You were all ready for Agile, and then you got a dose of predictive. So you have to balance it up, which mm-hmm. is why I called Taji to, to, to uh, talk now. And then Cynthia and Chandra, do you want to just pitch in? I know you may not be able to jump on on, a, on view, but can you, can you unmute and tell us just to compare apples to apples? What was your experience? Was it more like Taiwo's or was it more like, was it more like Taji's? No, no, uh, mine was uh, like uh, Taiwo's, like uh, more agile, actually. That's why I was able to complete. Yeah, yeah. Because predictive is always a little bit uh, challenging, you know. Yeah. It everything, is. I, it looks like everything I know, but when I want to answer, you know, like, I don't know. I'll, but more agile, it was more agile for me. Thank God for that. I remember. I remember yours was almost 90% agile, which which is equally yeah. crazy. Yes. Uh, and then Cynthia... You there? Yes, I'm here. I, I had more of hybrid. Uh-huh. I, I had maybe about 20-something percent of Agile. Mm, I love it. I love the... So people who are listening on YouTube and, and our friends here, Shona, Corvin, uh, who else is here? Yeah, our friends here. You kind of get the perspective that you cannot just say, I'm going to bank on everything that one person has said you gotta like weigh it and then you gotta you gotta make the decision from there like to study everything so he, you did the right thing you know uh you studied everything and uh here we are yeah any other questions for our friend before we move on uh taji any questions you'd like to ask him any further questions? Uh, how did you feel about the um, pace of the exam? Did you take Phil's? Um, I don't know. I, I joined about 15 minutes late, but did you take Phil's ex- um, advice and do like a minute and 20 second you know, per question? Or did you did you have time left at the end? Did you take a break? Any of that kind of stuff? Uh, here, actually, I, I also want to share my experience <laughs> regarding that as well. I think I, I did. I, I was you know, on, I was on time. Actually, I was really on time. But uh, it got to a point where I was really behind schedule. I was really behind schedule. And uh, so let's talk about this, Taiwo. So you were on point with the first 60 minutes, the first 60 questions. Point with the first 60 questions. And then you went on a break. So what happened after you went on a break? Tell us. So when I went on a break, I... The, the first lady that, that you know received me him, I couldn't really find find uh, find her there in the reception at the reception. So I just waited outside. There was another man there seated. So I I used more than 10 minutes. Actually, because the thing is that you you can go in with your wrist watch. There's no wall clock on the, on the wall, and there's no way you could check the time you left. You know, all what you know is the the the, the time you you wear when you like when you go for pause. Oh, sorry, when you go for break. Mm. So, so when I got there, you know, the the lady came back after like ten minutes, like, oh, okay, are you ready? I said, yeah, actually, I'm ready. So, okay, if you want to go to toilet just to refresh up, you can. I said, oh, cool. Then I went to toilet. So. I went back to the my I went back to my exam seat. So she put in the login, the code, and everything. Then when I started, then I realized that 
the time I left was below, like, has reduced actually, like, five minutes. Wow. So, so your, the time was now like 80 minutes or something. So how much time did you lose? Like, I, I, I lost more than, more than five minutes, actually. Wow. So, 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 it, was like, so I was, it wasn't really so obvious. Like, I was like, maybe I didn't really check well mm. when I left. Maybe when I was trying to look at my question flag in a well, maybe. But I was, I was a bit skeptical. Ugh. So you brought up a very good point, which I want to call people's attention to. And that what that is when you're going in, you don't have a watch, you don't have a phone, so you don't know how the time is moving. You don't know. No, well, no Phil, time. you ha you have a watch if you have just a regular watch. They take away, like they didn't take this ah. watch, but if you have like an iPhone watch that's like Google, where you could, you know. Oh, they left your watch on, really? Yes, I ah. could take this watch because it was this watch, but they said the watches they take are iPhones, really big watches oh, where you can hide something on it. But my little watch, I was able to keep. Okay, yeah. so Taiwan, you, did, you didn't I have a watch. I went to They took day. your watch, huh? No, they took it. They took wow. It. So it, this is good to know because it differs test center by test center. I've heard yeah. some people say they took, they asked her to take off her rings. <laughs> and this is crazy. Like, yeah, take, off I have your... take off my necklace as well, my jewelry. So, yeah. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. But that's the way the game is played in some test centers. They're pretty strict. So, when you got back in for the second round, it sounds like you had just, you were on 80. So, at what point did you get done at 150 because you caught up at some point? Did you catch yeah, up yeah. at the end of the second round? Yeah, I just had to because I was really behind schedule and I, I, I don't want to fail. Honestly, and tell, I, tell us, because you shared with me earlier a very interesting perspective that I'd like you to share with our friends here. It's kind of echoed in what Cynthia chatted into me privately here. And I'm going to put that in the chat so everyone can read what, what Cynthia uh, shared with me. This is key to how Taiwo caught up on the exam. So tell us, Taiwo, how you caught up finally. What did you do? Yeah, I think what I did uh, was uh, actually... I, um, I I just follow the mindset. Like the mindset, I, I, I have already prepared myself with agile mindset, with hybrid high uh, mindsets, agile or predictive. I've already prepared. Like the first thing, like knowing that, okay, like change requests have to go through some process of, you know, you, know, you just have to support your team or have a kind of a collocation is the best and the face-to-face -face meeting, you know, that's right mindset will really help. You know, if you really want to, to, to do anything, you have to consult your team, you know, collaborate together. And if you're in a problem, you have to consult the team, you know, talk together how you can make things done, you know, solve the problem. So you have to be seventh leader, you know, all these concepts in my brain, I just went in with it, just like, because I knew I was like 15 minutes like behind schedule so i was like okay just let me look at the questions just for 15 minutes for 15 questions because i signed one minute for one question and i just started looking at it okay uh-huh uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. okay this one is like the mindset uh -huh. let's go <laughs> but there were the questions that, they were a little bit like the same mm. and one was like targeted individually and one was targeting as a team mm -hmm. so, you know, these are the concepts you need to learn. Like, okay, oh, oh, uh -huh. this one is like a team that you pick it, there you go. You know, <laughs> by then I got to like 15, 15, then I was like looking at the time remaining and the questions like that. I was like, okay, it's now mm -hmm. a big thing to really start reading the questions. But actually, I wasn't really missing out the question. But the, the first option was looking at the, the options, then correlating it with various very fast and our pace reading just to know if actually there's not like what should you not have done you know mm. it's coming like that sometimes and you'd be like oh i should have you no know, take it another way around so just the mindset if you can can really understand the the, the mindset you know if you can really understand the mindset it's it's just the best that is so helpful and i appreciate you sharing that i put um a link in the chat 
for those friends who haven't listened to it, there are actually a couple of mindset videos that we have. One of them is very deep into agile and the other is deep into just the general hybrid thinking. Yeah. So I'm putting that for our friends in YouTube as well, just so that they've got a good perspective. That is, that, so that was a lifesaver. So you eventually caught up and the third round, you were back on track when you got to the second, the last set of, of, uh, of 60 questions. So when you got to question 120 forward, and you were able to get done. Did you have a little bit of wiggle room at the end, like a little bit of time left before hitting two thirty? Yeah, I I had at the end of the the time I had like uh, like three minutes left. Wow! Just wow! Three minutes. Yeah. Wow! Like, Did you change anything? Yeah, I actually went back and changed some stuff because okay. I wasn't, and I discussed it with you. Told yes, I, I was right. Like, yes, like you know. I don't know because I don't need to say some of the some of those questions because I have uh -huh. most of you know, the <laughs> moment. Um, wow. Wow. I just I have to be, you know, a PM PM high. Compliant. PM. Absolutely. You've sworn to secrecy. <laughs> all right. What would you do differently if you were taking this exam all over again from the beginning? Hmm. What I would have done differently is very simple. I, I think probably because the first, let me just come in this way. If a PMP PMP mentioned two hundred and thirty questions, uh, two hundred and two hundred and thirty minutes, minutes for for one hated questions, mm. I'm sure they have considered different lot of individual differences. You know, mm. they've considered slow learner. They've considered mm. uh, the average reader they've considered slow reader mm. understand the belief if you actually are slow because to me four hours it's enough for one into questions mm. four hours even you should even be like like one hours left mm. it, mm -hmm. it, it depends on what you have what you what you you are made up of you know maybe you mm. really read you, you don't need to read much you know the answer like so the thing is just that the PM high, they, they've already prepared for slow learner, but I just want people to be careful with how they spend the break. Mm. You, know, you might have spent, spent 10 minutes, more than 10 minutes, 20 minutes, but it will look like 10 minutes. Mm. And if you have spent beyond 10 minutes, let's say extra 10 minutes, you should know when you get back on your system, it's automatic. Your system, would have gone 10 minutes lesser of your time. So the 10 minutes means you, you need to answer 10 questions for a fast. Yeah. Mm. So if you're a slow learner, it simply means you need like 15 good questions or mm. only questions to catch up with. To catch up, yeah. Yes, yeah, you're yeah. exactly right. So all these things accumulate. So at the end of the hey, at the end of the, the exam, maybe the last 60, then you realize that you have like 40 or 50 questions left. Then you ask yourself, what happened? The first thing is you're not even conscious of the time you left the exam hall, the, the, the time. You're not conscious about it. So you never knew what was going on. You thought, so oh, when I came back, the exam started. It's not telling you, hey, Mr. Man, you're late for the exam, you're late. Yeah, you're a worker. You, say, you enjoy your time, right? Good of you. Mm. What I would have done next time is that I wanted to check my phone to even know because when I realized the first one, I realized mm. I got, I wanted to open my bag. The woman said no. Mm. Because you might call or do some stuff. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but Tawa, why didn't you check the clock? There is a clock running at the top of the computer of the computer in the right hand corner. You could use that since you didn't have your um watch. It's just the timer. But once you, yeah, once you leave, yeah, the but the timer Counts down, it has a number of break. questions that you still have left to go for that time. Yeah, the time yeah. Is If you're seated, Taji, once you leave the computer and you go on your break, you're just free falling because yeah, you stops. don't have a No, watch. it stops for 10 minutes. And if you, like Tywo said, if you come back late, it starts without you. Yeah, but you, yeah, you need not. to be there, yeah. Right, so correct. correct. Your problem, Tywo, was that 
the person up front said, you're fine, chill. But you shouldn't have chilled. You should have gone back in. That was what I would have done differently. That was the problem. (laughs) The next time, if you have such person in your center or they're not really so conscious or they had a lot of things. Yeah, they don't know how it works. They don't know how the exam works. So you got to... You got to be on top of it, and this is a good piece of advice for anyone, whichever country is taking the exam in. You be on top of it. Show up like seven minutes or eight minutes. Don't let the full ten minutes go because you could be struggling to get in. I heard from someone else that she was waiting for them to use the wand. You know, going in and out. They use that wand to check you going in and out, which wastes time. So her time was wasted a little bit just trying to check back in because there were other people going for the break. So just be aware of all of these things and. That's a good piece of advice as far as what you would do differently next time. And there's the breakdown, 75, 150, 225, and you'd be happy that you you followed that. Let's talk about the knowledge areas. I know you seem to master these quite well, and you want to share with us anything that helped you to master the knowledge areas as you did. Oh, uh, well, I think what has really helped me, it's uh, like a holy say, you know, I always bring this knowledge area into real life situation. Just as simple as that. Mm. So, um, I felt I want to buy something in the gross, uh, grocery store. You know, I need to do my analysis of what do I need? What is the benefit of those stuff for my personal daily life? Or mm. what are the things that I need to know just to get a good things done for myself? You know, I want to buy for one. So, you know, I just had to develop a kind of a sheet, you know, to write something on, mm. you know, and just to give like, okay, this is what I really want for myself, you know, just to have an idea, you know, all these things to the scope, you know, collecting requirements, you know, defining the scope, you know, creating the WBS is like seeing it as, okay, you, you list all what you want to buy at home, you want to buy your toothbrush, you want to buy your, you know, you just list everything. Yeah, mm. because as a scope, you know, you're just telling you the work of all the works you need to get done. You know, mm-hmm. it's a simple, uh, that's what scope is telling you because you need to know what you want to do, you know, to know where you're heading to. Mm. So you just list everything and, you know, you prioritize it. You you have to sequence this just to know, okay, I have to get this in this place. I have to get this in this place. I have to get this in this place. So I use like real life situation from integration to scope mm. to quality to resources. Lovely. Lovely. I use a real life situation and, uh, you know, it's just what I do in the toilet in most cases, you know. Lovely. You just take everyday stuff. And then, like you said, you stand in front of the mirror and try to teach yourself right then in the, in the restroom. Yeah. And it, it, <laughs> say that again. Even though if I'm saying jargon sometimes, <laughs> Yeah, you got you got to be comfortable with yourself to teach yourself, and you know if you're fluffing, and you know if you're hitting the hitting the mark. And honestly, that's what I did preparing for my exam. I would record myself teaching back to myself even before I got certified, just to make sure that I'd mastered the content. So, highly subscribe to it. Awesome stuff. Well, now it's time for our friends to ask any questions. Are there any questions for our PMP guru? Go ahead and ask them right away. Corvin, Shauna, questions for Taiwo. Friends on YouTube, you got any questions? Now would be a great time. Go for it. Any questions? Is there any area you think you should have studied even more once you look back? It may possibly you receive different type of questions. Is there any area you can say, you know what, I really should have looked at that a little bit more? Yeah, actually, uh, well, I was a bit uh, fortunate. I, I think it's just a part of the procurement mm. somehow. It's just a part of the procurement. And the reason is just that, you know, when I first started the paintball, I was very deep from from, from these uh, process areas to like resources. So I stopped at the resources, then I went back to LMS so I then later, the second time I had to read the whole pen book. But the thing is that I read more from, from the integration to, to like the resources, but I never continued from stakeholders and all those things. So I have a weak point there. So 
I think the 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 issue I had is be is from the the procurement process. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but I read it, but I was not really confident about it, especially the contract side. And were no. those prevalent on your exam? Because I remember we talked about that the week before your test. So how did that yeah. pan out? Yeah, that was why I said I was, I, I, I read, I read very well, but I was like, mm, let's see, let's see. But <laughs> I, 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 but I, just the confidence is not really there, actually. So, okay. But it wasn't a showstopper topic because you had all above targets. So obviously it didn't, it didn't stop you, but was it prevalent? Was it something that appeared several times? No. Not really. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Questions. Come on now. Taji, do you have a question for our buddy? Oh, you're on mute. Yes. I was going to ask him in my test. I don't know if y'all went over this again. My questions were very, very long. They were situational and it was four or five sentence questions, which took a long time. That's why it took me the total length of the time allocated to finish the test because of how long my questions were. Did you have the same experience or were your questions more of the length that we got in, in the lessons in the, in the uh, master class? Yeah, I think I, I still came, I, I came across like larger questions, but not that much actually. But it's too, uh, I was just reading fast actually, you know, sometimes I don't even read the, the first, you are this, you're that, say project is trying to execute a software, blah, blah. I'm not reading that. It's just an intro. So I just, I went through to the main thing, you know, and just, that's very true, but actually I didn't, the, the larger questions, I didn't meet much, didn't really meet more of those questions at all. That's good it. to know. So I'm gonna play a game that I played with our PMPs. I'm gonna show you and I want you to comment, typical size, much bigger, much smaller, or you could even say nothing like that as far as size. Are you ready? Here's the, here's the game. Just say no way or yes. Okay, here we go. Let's play the game. This big. Mm -hmm. I could have, <laughs> could have the exam, actually. Yes or no? <laughs> Never. No. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's take a look at this. Uh-huh. Cool. So sweet. I, I love this range. I love it a lot. <laughs> Typical, huh? Yeah, it's just it's just nice. Yeah, just like this. Okay. Like this. What what about this? Is this overkill? Mm, maybe like not so much. Okay. Not. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. No. no. <laughs> Nothing like this. Okay. Oh let's let's be a little bit more conservative. Let me shave a few off. Did you have anything that was as short as this? Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. The question may not make sense, but just look at the size. Something this small, anything like that? Mm, yes, some questions are like that, but they just few. I think mm. I, first one you showed, I said I just like, I think I had more of that. Ah, so... Something like this is, okay. So is it something like this? Three lines, mm -hmm. oops, hang on. Yes. Three yes. lines, yeah? Three lines, four lines. Four lines, line. okay. Three lines, four lines, okay. That's fair enough. And then what about the uh, the option length? Were there any that had some really long options like this? Yeah, they were. They were ah. But okay. the thing is, is like once you understand the just go with the agile, like I said, the agile mindset and predictive, not only agile mindset, agile mm. has mindset, predictive also has his own mindset. You understand? Mm. You just have to know. Maybe uh Mr. Phil can also try to to try to develop some lessons. Actually, we 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 
got a lot of information from there, but at least just to capture maybe as like a roundup for most of the uh, upcoming classes as well. Let people know more about the mindset strongly. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So the mindset, I don't know if you recall the 36 mantras. Yeah. It's covered. That's why you were able to, to kill it. It was ingrained in you. We had one of the immersions where we actually did the 36 mindset mantras for the exam. Do you recall that Taji? Yeah. Oh, you're on mute. Twice, remember, because I went through immersion two times. That's true. So I did it 72 times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I don't want to keep our boss waiting. It's going on an hour now and he's in Germany. It's two o'clock. He's been very gracious to come on. He's got work tomorrow. So I don't, I don't want to keep him any further. Thank you so much, uh, Taiwo, for coming on and speaking to us. So for every Taiwo, there's a cane day. Mm. Yeah. Sure. Where's, your, where's cane day? <laughs> Is in Scotland. Oh, really? PM you know, I have a Taiwo on a Kahende, right? Yeah. Yeah, your kids. <laughs> yeah, they just turned 14. Yeah, <laughs> I sure do. The girl is Taiwo and the boy is Kahende. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Congratulations again, Taiwo. But I, mean, I knew you were going to do it. I was, I was not surprised to hear the news. Not <laughs> at all. Yeah, uh, actually, I, I was very, I was, I was really afraid of, you know, of the unknown. You know, I was like, <laughs> that, I feel like, oh man. So, did anybody ask you that question? And then, um, did Phil ask you his famous question? How did you feel about question one? Were you feeling confident and you, you, you slammed it, or were you like, oh, I didn't no. ask him that question. Thanks for the reminder. You How did? did you feel when you saw question one? Oh, you didn't ask him. Okay, good. <laughs> Oh, uh, when I saw the first question, it was like, okay, it's it's nice. It's not not really not really bad at all. So it's really simple. You That's know, like good. I don't I don't like to be saying something is very simple. <laughs> no, well, no, it it is know, they're it not is. simple because they be trying to trick you. I know you saw that a lot. They be trying to trick you. <laughs> the simplest stuff is the most difficult stuff, actually. So. <laughs> You don't have the knowledge of it, you don't have it. There's no any other system to it. What you know is what you give, what you have is what you give. Mm -hmm. If you don't have it, it's something else. You, you know, if they tell you how to do the electrics and the you know connections, home connections, and you know, if you don't have the knowledge, it's difficult. But immediately mm -hmm. you have that's I know Phil used to say that in that class, right? He used to say either you know it or you don't. I mean, it's, it's not one of those questions you could just guess or fiddle around with, either you know it. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> oh, you're yeah, it's just a time I was trying for my driving school, you know. If you don't know, some of those guys we attended the, the same test, you know, they finished before time. I was like looking at them, like, how did these guys just finish? But the key is just that once you know what it is, it is what it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I did study well for you. Then I, I, I took longer time and I feel it. I, I was sweating. And did you, but did you also find there were some questions that were just common sense? Sure. Yeah. I mean, whether you didn't have to know it or know it. This is just common sense, morality, things of that nature. You know, no, either, either, either you're the devil incarnate, so you wouldn't know, we or you're a moral, be. decent human being, and you would just get the answer right because you're a moral, we human, decent human being. Sense. You know what I mean? You should have even called that common sense, actually. <laughs> because the common sense is not common. People, you know, there's a way we, we program our mind and that's what the classes really trained us to be. You know, like I said something before when we had a class, I'm a kind of a predictive person. So if a, uh, if a, if a, bead, um, a vendor, you know, decided not to deliver at a particular time, for me, my own, I'll be fired a person. That is my mentality. Actually, it's not common sense. You understand? Right. Mm -hmm. I will fire the person because that's who I am. Uh, if for you, the personality might be, oh, just let me consider him. But for the exam, I am wrong. Or maybe for you, it's right. right for me. So it's just for us to just understand the mindset. No, nothing is common. It's all about that mindset. It's all about mindset. All about the mindset. Well, thank you very much, everyone. If there are no further questions, I'll just close out by letting you know this is coming to you from Prezion. Go on down to praiseion.com, take a look at our offerings, whether it's leadership after your PMP, you want to learn, hybrid coaching, 
for Agile and Hybrid Teams that's coming up this Saturday. You can join that, CAPM training, PMP training, one-on-one, whatever you need, going down to praiseyon.com. But a huge shout out to our friends, our PMPs who also came through to support our PMP bus. And today. I can vouch for Praiseyon. I got two <laughs> certifications in what, how many weeks? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Taji. Uh, so Thank I can you. vouch for this Praiseyon. Just listen to Phil, you'll be all right. Thank right, you Tywo? So Just right. listen to Phil, right? <laughs> Thank you. Enough, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chandra and Cynthia and Taji and oh, Taiwo. Whoa. Who's that, Cynthia? That's... The PMP boss. <laughs> <laughs> I was well, you on a roll, Phil. You on a roll. Exactly, <laughs> Phil. Crazy and has to do something special because I mean the past, I don't know, throughout the fall. It's just been like one PMP bus. Raining after- PMPs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Raining well PMPs. Done. Thank you, everyone who's listening. Join us. Got class coming up. Mm-hmm. Starting again January 7th. If you mean business, you need to go join. Thank you all very much. I'll go mm-hmm. ahead and stop the live stream and we'll continue the after party. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's stop that recording. Bye for now.